Tyam is currently performing quite well in various CDH tournaments. This is EDH Top 16, link below, website made by Eminence. They are recording win rate and deck lists. This means that we can try and learn things from it. So here we have a bunch of various people who have entered various different tournaments at different times. For example, this is the same person who entered two different tournaments and win rate from all of those entries. And if we calculate all of those win rates together, we get an average of 24.76% win rate for Tiam in general, calculated from 59 decks. But we can go a little bit deeper than that. What you see on this graph is the number of mana rocks or ramp cards actually that every single Tiam deck actually plays. So every blue staple, as you're watching here on the diagram, is a individual deck. The higher the staple goes, the more ramp cards they actually include. And as you can see here, they are all very similar. Same thing if we look at an amount of stacks cards. The staples are basically almost on equilibrium among each deck in general, give and take. Some have a tiny bit more but and some have a tiny bit less, but in general they have something of the same amount. This is the number of man uh, rituals, a very low amount in general, and pretty much the same amount among every single deck. This is the amount of tutors, we are seeing a few that are a little bit lower, but in general they also have the same amount all decks together so to say. Now because the staples are basically all at the same level, all decks have basically the same amount of each subcategory, more or less all decks are in general a similar version to each other. However, they have about 283 unique cards. So when you look at all the cards, all of these 59 decks actually play, you're finding 283 unique ones. This means that they are playing individually different cards even though they play let's say the same amount of value engines, ram cards, tutors, but they play different versions of them. So let's dig deeper. Now we're watching at individual card choices and win rate attached to those cards that people select to play. So let's begin with something simple, Bird of Paradise. The circle diagram in the middle are showcasing the inclusion rate, how many people are playing it among the 59 decks, and basically every single deck plays Birds of Paradise in it. Just above my head you have the average win rate of Tiam in general among all of those 59 decks. And then the win rate even above that is the people's individual decks where they all include Birds of Paradise. And because everyone is including it, it gets the same win rate as the average. But let's look at a card that everyone isn't playing, Fauna Shaman. So I, we mentioned tutors, they're all playing about the same amount of tutors, but they play different kinds of tutors. So in here we ha have 10 decks, you see play 10, don't play 49, which means that you have a percentage and inclusion rate of about 17%. So 17% of the 59 decks play Fauna Shaman. And when we calculate the average win rate among those 10 decks only, we get an average win rate of 29, almost 30%, which is better than the average. We can then do a little bit of the opposite. So here we have Enlightened Tutor, another tutor that is played by 49 people and it's not played by 10 people. So maybe it's a perfect split, like maybe the 10 people are playing Fauna Shaman and the other 49 is playing this. I don't think so, I think it's a mix match. However, we have a lower win, uh, not a huge lower, we have basically the same win rate playing Light Tutor compared to Fauna Shaman. But here we should make a small pause for a tiny second. Statistics isn't everything and the sample size is very small. Suddenly I'm making a lot of really big claims like play Fauna Shaman instead of Enlightening Tutor. It's not really what I'm saying. We're just showcasing some, some statistics and we will draw some conclusions afterwards. But player skill and luck also have a huge factor in determination of the win rate. So 
everything is not the win rate. If I'm showcasing like this card is better than that card according to some statistics that I found from a very small sample rate, that might not equal into more wins. But it is kind of interesting to see a lot of different cards, how they kind of perform and what kind of win rate various decks have with them. For example, this one, you have a little bit of a lower win rate, uh, kinda. But you also get a picture of kind of the metagame, what you need to actually do. For example, here we have Elvish Spirit Guide with an inclusion rate of 37% and the people that actually included this had a higher win rate than the average and here we actually have a little bit bigger group not 10 anymore 22 decks actually included this thing but it's also kind of showcase the importance of what you need in this format basically speed now this is a very small sample size, so we can't really say that this actually means anything. But it also kind of showcases what kind of stacks cards you actually need. So this is Peacekeeper. Creatures can't attack. That's shutting down a lot of various com uh, com combos with Nayela, Godo and etc. So kind of cool to see that people are considering it. You also get to see people's in general idea of what is needed inside this format. And the takeaway from this is that there aren't that many Tiam decks that actually consider Peacekeeper, but it could be good. So this one actually surprised me a little bit. I'm not surprised about the win rate, but I'm surprised about the very low inclusion rate. Only two decks actually played Falia, and I actually think that this is one of the best stacks cards... Oh, no, not correct. Opagent and some other ones are actually better, but this one is actually, in my opinion, really good. I kind of recommend this one. Bit surprised that very few people actually played it, but as you can see, it kind of performed quite good for those two decks. We actually have a lot of cards on a very extreme low inclusion rate, like Archivist of Ogma, only two decks played it. Aedervile, I actually kind of like this. I, I really want to highlight this one or give it a shout out. It's definitely better than a lot of people think. So it's something of a ramp card, but it also goes through rule of law and counter spells. Now most counter spells inside this format aren't a targeting creatures, but one more thing is that you can put the creature into play at instant speed. So I think a lot of more decks should start to consider this artifact actually. Sphere of resistance, yep, I agree with this, more people should play it, it's a very good stacks card currently. I'm a little bit surprised about this one, touch the spirit realms with a very, it, it has a very good inclusion rate. So here we are basically seeing a few, not a 50-50 split, but 34% are playing touch of the spirit realm, that's 20 decks, but the average win rate with it inside the deck is a little bit lower compared to the average win rate of all Tiam decks together. Hmm. This one I also want to highlight, I actually think Warping Veil is really good. I played it myself before in Monogreen Jisan and I loved it in there. The counter spells and having instant speed interaction is actually quite key to have, better than you believe it. It stops a lot of different board wipes, Toxic Deluge, that's a sorcery, so yeah, there you go. Wall of Roots, an all-star auto-include, must-have. This is almost a 50-50 split in the inclusion rate, and the decks that actually played Yeez and the Wandering Bard received a pretty good win rate, in average. Let's actually, now, we're gonna draw a little bit of a tiny conclusion here. We're not gonna go big wide, because it's very risky to start and sit and say things from statistics. But if we wanna just be a little bit philosophical here, so we have a really high win rate in having Yisan inside the deck. And going back to touch the spirit realm, this is something of like an instant speed small interaction, and compare that to something like Falia. Now, the big thing is that, small philosophical idea here, don't, I might be absolutely wrong, but maybe the focus for Tiam in general should be more towards mid-range and stacks as the interaction. But then have some really key things that can shut down specific things that your opponents could accidentally do. But you draw your own conclusion. It's, it's very hard to say things set in stone, so I might be wrong on that one. Maybe spot removal and small 
anti-creature removal could be great. Uh, statistics is not everything basically and the sample size is still very low. This one actually surprised me. I thought 1000 year elixir would be a lot better, but maybe having haste on your creatures isn't that important for the combo in general for Tyam. This surprises me. I thought Veil of Summer would gonna have a much higher inclusion rate. I'm not surprised about the win rate though. I think that this is a card that have continuously been performing for me and whenever I see people play it it's always doing something good. The worst case use with this card, the absolute bottom floor, is one green mana, draw a card and that's the only thing it does. And that's like a cantrip, like you're digging through your deck, you're drawing into your combos and your tutors and your hate bears and things you need to win. But it protects you when you suddenly want to like resolve your win con through counter wars so to say. So I think more people should play it. I'm I'm skeptic about the decision among players to not include this. This I really like. However, countering creatures is not super key. You basically have Dockside and Fasas and Gilded Drake, Op Agent, Dolphin. Never mind, <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Let's actually pause for a second on all the different crazy cards we could look at because it is a very, very long list. So we're not gonna go through all of them because that would make an enormously long video. However, if you specifically wanna know about a specific card that you're seeing here on the list that I didn't talk about in general, write it in the comments below of this video and I will give you the percentage and also how many people included it in their deck as well. So if you wanna know something specific, ask away and I will try to deliver your information. Let's get back to the video and look at this, because this is important. This is something I actually want to talk a lot about and we're going to look at a lot of different cards soon. What you're looking at are combo cards. You could also kind of say commander kinda commander focused cards, because a lot of these cards that you're looking at on this list are bad in general. Or well, let's just put it like this. They're not good outside the use of the commander, so to say. They are dead cards, could you could say. An example of that is Witherbloom Apprentice. This is a dead card, in my opinion. You don't want to have this inside any CDH deck, except for the purpose of winning with it, which this can do. Very low inclusion rate. A lot of time decks are trying different combo cards instead, but the win rate among those that actually did play it was pretty good, but still, the sample size is just too low. And then obviously Shane of Smog, the counterpart, the A plus B combo basically has the exact same values because you play Witherbloom Apprentice, then you play Shane of Smog. But Shane of Smog is not the focused combo for Tyam in general. It's not what you think when you're hearing Tyam. This is what you're thinking when you're hearing Tyam. This is Devoted Druid. It has a 100% inclusion rate. I 100% agree with that. This is one of the best cards in Tyam. Now you actually need to like look away from the statistics. If you don't play this, you're doing it wrong. So the trick with this and Tyam is that Devoted Druid can put minus counters on it to untap itself to basically generate more green mana. So if you buff it, you can tap it three times, put three minus one minus one counters on it, and then use the free mana you generated to activate Tyam and remove all the counters and basically activate Tyam infinitely. But how are we gonna like achieve that? What different options do we have? And by the way, there are other tricks to create a similar version of Devoted uh, Druid, basically. One card I was a little bit surprised about, I actually really like this one, I think everyone should play it, but apparently everyone isn't, and the decks that don't actually have a... It basically has the same win rate as the average, but this is a great green land, I do actually recommend for Tyam, because you can sacrifice it if you have 7 or more cards in your graveyard to give Tyam plus 3 plus 3, which means you can go infinite. When Tyam first came, a lot of people were talking about Shield Mate. Now apparently people have been moving away from it, and the decks that actually had it had a lower win rate in general. So maybe this is something to actually move away from. I'm a bit surprised. I don't play Tyam myself, so I don't have like Tyam experience to come with. I'm just looking at what people are playing and what win rate they get with the cards they choose to play. But this does go infinite with Devoted Druid. You sacrifice this, you give your Devoted Druid a lot of toughness, and boom, you can go infinite Tyam activations. 
Another path or another tie -um trick instead of Devoted Druid is basically Carrion Feeder. Sacrifice a creature and put counters on this thing. Here's the thing, tie -um generates Vigilance counters on every creature that entered the battlefield. So the usual trick with this is that you generate tokens somehow by either it being a creature or sacrificing a creature or there are other tricks. For example, this young wolf that actually almost every time deck actually plays, it has undying. So if you sacrifice this, it comes back with a counter and you can then use time to remove that counter, which means you can sacrifice it again. It kind of becomes immortal. You need mana, you need a sack outlet. So it's not perfect, but it's definitely a card that works with the time game plan, so to say. And there are lots of different versions of that undying theme to consider. And there's a lot of strange cards you could suddenly play inside your time deck just to receive a lot of counters that you can eat to activate time more. Playing time is basically a counter economy, producing them, consuming them, and so on. But now we need to talk about the elephant in the room. So this win rate is actually pretty good. However, we have to be a little bit, let's say skeptical and talk about the potential future for time here. You see, a big reason I think Tyam actually works quite well right now is that there's a lot of opponents that haven't really played that much against it and haven't really understood how to deal with it. And I really, really want to emphasize that this is a very bad card in CVH. Now, it's good for your deck. It's doing what Tyam needs and wants to do. However, it means that you might become commander centric. You have to have your commander in play for this to actually be anything. Now including some of these and maybe having a lot of them might give you a good win rate. But in the future if people start to figure out that if you just kill Tyam, I remove the commander, it's so commander centric that the entire deck just falls apart. That is something to actually consider and be wary of. So having too many of these might be risky. And I actually think this card is a really good example of this. And this is actually making me a little bit scared. You see, this Suvan library is almost, in my opinion, a really recommended card a lot of decks should play. It's like a value engine. Having Suvan library inside your deck makes you more resilient, less commander dependent. And as you can see here, having it inside your deck seems to be giving you a pretty functional win rate. Now the sample size is very low, but Sylvan Library is something we've looked at before on other videos and it has a very good performance in general. So I think the win rate is correct even though the sample size is very low. Now Sylvan Library is actually as an example of showcasing that you might need to have caught inside a deck that is going to function without the commander. You can have other value engines up there, but Sylvan Library is very like green and uh, well known by many people. Another example is Tumna the Weaver inside the deck. This is basically a alternative commander if you draw into it and you feel like there's a Dranite in play or they're just spot removing my time all day. Then yeah, Tumna and accumulate value. So maybe the choice of having too many young wolf variant could lead you to a risky path. Are there other combos besides the Witherbloom's Shin of Smog combo we looked at that Tyam could play? Definitely, you could tweak your build a lot. You could run Rasakef combos. Absan have been famous for running Rasakets. Various combos, actually. There's even this new card, Abdel Adrian, that functions really well, like a World Gorger Dragon combo with Animated Dead. So that's an alternative. You can actually do some Absan Birthing Pod combos. They are a little bit, st yeah, nah, don't recommend that. And according to win rate, you're getting something off the average, but this is another way to become less time dependent. But going back to that Yisan the Wandering Bard, this is basically a tutor. 
you're tutoring with this, but it's also a value engine. So it could function like a both of us, like a very bad version of a demonic tutor, really slow and expensive, but a form of value engine at the same time. So there are lots of different ways you can make your time resilient and develop towards the metagame. This is another great highlight. This is a value engine, an interaction versus opponents, and like discard a card to proliferate. Once, I, once again, we are very power hungry for those counters. This is gonna, like a huge counter engine. So it's gonna work good with your commander Tyam. It's gonna work good when you wanna remove some creatures, and it's gonna work as a value engine without Tyam as well. And then there's diff this path you could take like a overrun id basically it's not heavily played by many of the tiam decks but it's definitely something to showcase i don't recommend it whenever another creature enters the battlefield it gets plus one plus one and then you can make your creatures basically unblockable it's cute it's good with your tiam and it actually helps your combo like this is actually a combo card for tiam still though i uh... I think it's a very, once again, I want to highlight and emphasize that it's a risky path to take to try to go for too much of this. You gotta be selective am among these. Looking at a typical time list, this one, Afonso Silva, four wins, one loss, one draw, a 66.67 win rate, and he got second in a tournament. Looking at his deck list, this is what he's playing. So among the combo cards, so to say, we have Young Wolf, Strange Root Geist, Hex Drinker, I don't like that one, Carrion Feeder, this thing I'm not even gonna try to pronounce, Blood Flow Connoisseur, Guardian of the Fate, I think he was the only one who actually played this, uh, by the way, if I remember correctly. Village Bell Ringer, but it didn't really go overboard. This is a finisher, Moon Glove Extract. Once you have infinite time activations, you just put this into play infinitely and deal infinite damage. But it's also a way to like interact with op agents and Dolphy Void Wave, various things. He's playing Promise of Boonray, Rule of Lock, Song of the Dryad, Deafening Silence, Hunting Grounds, kinda like that one. 30 lands total, link to his decklist in the description below of the video. If you want to have a conversation about Tiam, feel free to actually write to me on Discord. If you want me to take a look at your specific deck and draw some statistics from it compared to other decks with similar cards, feel free to join the Patreon. For $5 a month, I pledge to take a look at some deck list that you send to me. This is actually a Patreon uh, uh, perk that has already existed for quite a while. I'm just uh, updating it. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something from the video. I'll see you in the next one, guys.